people who are feeling like they're broke, they are broke and they're going to get a lot broker because right. the purchasing power of that money is continuing to fall. Now, activists who are concerned about the well-being of folks, you know, if it's if the world is, it's a wonderful life and there's Mr. Potter, who is the capitalist and there's Jimmy Stewart, who's the lefty, right? And he's the savings and loan and this is the Frank Capra is a lefty and you made this genius a a allegory when and the little angels on the bridge and he's, he's the little you know Zozo's paddles <laughs> yeah yeah he eggs all of that yeah so if that's the analogy you want to use then it's Pottersville all the way down you know it's nothing but Pottersville Oh, it's getting worse I mean if every single mom in America is on OnlyFans what the fuck are we talking about what kind of society do we live in? Max highlights a stark reality many are facing today, the diminishing purchasing power of money. It's not just about feeling broke. It's about a system that's increasingly making it harder for the average person to thrive. The gap between the haves and have nots widens as we transition more into what Max calls Pottersville a metaphor for a society dominated by the interests of the wealthy, with little regard for the common good. If you're feeling the pinch of a weakening currency, or if the term financial freedom seems like a distant dream, this video is for you. Before we dive into Max's insights, remember to hit that subscribe button and give us a like. It helps us bring more content like this to you. This is where we're at in America. It's not getting any better. Oh. Except that mom's gonna won't be able to feed her children, not even on OnlyFans. Right, because she'll be making 100, 200 grand a year in OnlyFans, but her rent will be six grand a month or so. She won't be able to afford Inflation, it. It's not, you know, a gallon of milk will be 10, 15 bucks. Yeah, this is this is what Bitcoin is 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 fixes this because you are it's it's uh, not you can't print it right, and you can't print it up, no matter what the demand is. The other thing I say to activists too, when they're like, yeah, but Graham, it's, it'll be another thing. A bunch of rich guys will control it. I said, every piece of Bitcoin you buy, that's, they can't have it. There's yeah. only going to be 21 million. Right. So just try to own even a half of one. I mean, if you want a full, we talked about this last time. If, if you want a full Bitcoin. Yeah. You, you, you are ahead of so many people. Like, and that's why I'm like, go put, I just have to put five to 10% of your assets in Bitcoin just to play it safe. If yeah. just, 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 if you got two grand in the bank, just put $200 in Bitcoin, just, and just tuck it away, put it on a cold wallet. There's plenty of videos online on how to do that. Learn what it is and just sit and you'll, you'll five years from now, you'll go, thank God. I listened to that whack job surfer lefty and his buddy, Max. You speak the truth. Um, it's absolutely correct. The, um, the, the ability for self-preservation. You know, talk about the Palestine situation. You know, again, in 12 years ago, I was <clears> like very publicly on my show, I was telling the Palestinian Central Bank, they have a central bank. I was like, you should put everything in a Bitcoin. And, and you know, you could, when you, and, and in 10 years, you'd be able to buy Israel. You know, and, but of course that message didn't get through. I have like huge popularity in the black community in America and around the world because you know, I was very uh, adamant on Kaiser Report talking to black men in America saying buy Bitcoin now uh, as a way to, uh, it's, it's, it's why you can't take your money. Yeah. Okay. I mean, those are the terms that I would use because, um, and I think it's appropriate in this case, you know, um, it's, it, it, it's uh, money that cannot be seized and black communities constantly... You look at look what happened in New Orleans after the hurricane there. Oh. All, the, the, the ninth ward, everybody's house got uh, stolen and turned over to the developers. It, it was like one of the only thriving black communities in America, uh, built up over many generations. And um, uh, boom, the, 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 the land grab. Yeah, land grab came in, took it all, uh, gone. And uh, this happens over and over and over again. Over again. Right? Yeah. So you know, the black community. Put your wealth into Bitcoin as much as you can. Max Kaiser presents a solution to the financial disenfranchisement many face. Bitcoin. Unlike traditional currencies controlled by central banks, Bitcoin offers a decentralized alternative that cannot be inflated at will. This inherent scarcity could be the key to preserving, if not enhancing, one's financial power in the face of rampant inflation and diminishing purchasing power. Max's advice is straightforward yet powerful. 
Consider allocating a small portion of your assets into Bitcoin. Even owning a fraction of a Bitcoin places you ahead in a world where wealth accumulation is becoming increasingly difficult. This strategy isn't just about potential financial gains. It's a form of financial self-defense in an economy where traditional savings mechanisms no longer suffice. The conversation doesn't stop at personal finance. Max also addresses systemic issues, highlighting how Bitcoin could serve as a tool for economic empowerment for marginalized communities and nations facing financial oppression. This perspective opens a broader dialogue on how cryptocurrencies can be leveraged for social and economic justice beyond mere investment vehicles. HSBC. Which Hong Kong? It's a huge. I know, yeah. B British bank. You know, they 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 were originally in China. They were doing so much money laundering business with Mexican drug cartels that they actually built facilities that would fit um, the boxes that they would submit into the cambios to be laundered by HSBC and design them so that a million dollars in a suitcase was a certain dimensions, so, and that they created a. A depository box to accommodate the actual suitcase full of dirty cash. Like they built and designed a cambio to accept dirty cash in the, in, in the, in, along the physical dimensions of the dirty cash. Like, like that's how granular and they were getting into the industrial strength, the assembly line of fraud. And they were caught laundering hundreds of billions and billions. Wachovia Bank, by the way, I think is the most Mexican drug money laundering bank ever. They were bought by Warren Buffett, who never mentions the fact that he bought into Wachovia Bank. And they were, I think they got caught with like 400 billion. You know, these are numbers that I haven't looked at in a, in a little bit, so it might be off, but astronomical amounts of money. But HSBC is, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of money laundering that they did, they, they are so incredibly corrupt. And uh, of course, they were the first to say that Bitcoin is used in Ill illicit activities. Right. But of course, that's false. I mean, at one point, Bitcoin may have accounted for 2% of all illicit activities. But of course, that number is going down. So I think it's under 1% because it's a horrible use case, illicit activities, because it's all in the public blockchain. You know, you can see all the right. transactions. Mm -hmm. It's easy to find uh, if you're doing criminal activity on Bitcoin. It's not practical for criminal activity at all. It disincentivizes criminal activity, just like it disincentivizes war and violence. Well, that's the other thing too. Maybe go, oh, but Bitcoin's used for for criminality. I go, what about that pipeline that was hacked and they used Bitcoin and they caught the people because it was so easy to track down. Exactly. And then and when 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 other people like Liz Warren say, oh, it's bad, you know, it's, yeah. it's criminals use it. I go, you're right. No one's ever used the U.S. dollar for anything. There's no drugs or blood on a U.S. dollar it's bill. Completely false. Her it, information is completely false, and it's getting even worse. And the the use of dollars in criminal activity, money is uh, of course um, well documented, and uh, it's without a question, it's the most used uh, to, for illicit activity. Um, I mean, I, I've seen Better Call Saul. I've seen, uh, you know, I know what goes on there. I know I just, you know, the people use freaking suitcases full of cash. Right. And, and Bitcoin is not is not doing it for them because it's yeah. not it doesn't have the same thing. So it's she's completely false about it and uh, wrong about it. So and plus, they don't get the bigger picture, which, which is that it disincentivizes a lot of aberrant behavior and warlike behavior and violence anyway. So, of course, her biggest supporters are the banks. And we know that she's essentially sure. a crook. So um, well, why we, we spend even five minutes um, trying to sort through or parse her words to find out where she's going wrong because we know from the get-go she's just a yeah she's she's bought and paid for by the banks that's, right that's she's it. on only fans i mean there's only <laughs> the oh only, god no now i have to something visualize that. very you yeah. know she's one Ooh. step removed from only fans right she should be shaking her on only fans that would be her normal job but because some lunatics in massachusetts gave her some votes she's out there for the banks pretending like she's virtue signaling, which she's not. She's She should be just doing things on OnlyFans. That's, that's, um, but this is true of all politicians. Yeah. I don't want to uniquely smear no. uh, Liz Warren because she's not one, and she's not an exception. You know, she is the common political animal that we're dealing with. And and, and I, I say this to the audience too. If you want to know, you, you've got this politician, you really like and believe them, go to opensecrets.org. So OpenSecrets.org is a nonpartisan, non-for-profit website. So just to give people a little background, the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission, any donation that's 2000 and up, you have to register it, right? Right. You have to register your name. So go to the OpenSecrets.org, look up any politician and see where they get their money from. Right. It is a matter of public record. Right. And there you see 
there is, as I say, follow the money, connect the dots. You get the truth of, of everything. You mm. find out everything. Like we talked about the war machine and we'll wrap up here in a second. But, yeah. but in 2020, uh, the defense industry spent $49 million across all candidates running Senate, Congress, and the White House. Right. Okay. Top three recipients in the third place, Bernie Sanders, $800,000. Mm. Mm, there's no Santa. Sorry, Bernie. You, 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 I, you lost me there. In the two position, Donald J. Trump, $2.7 million from the defense industry. Number one recipient, Joe Biden, $3.1 million. Right. So what does that tell you? Whoever would have won in the last election, mm. we would be having war. Somewhere, maybe not in Ukraine, it would be somewhere mm -hmm. else, but there would still be mm -hmm. war because they bought everybody, they hedged their bets. Yeah. And that'll happen again. And that's happening right now in 2024. They're going to spend their money to make sure that their war machine goes. And, and if someone gets elected and says, I'm taking us out of fill in the blank, Israel, Ukraine, great. They'll start another war somewhere else. Max turns the spotlight on the banking industry, particularly HSBC's involvement in money laundering. This example underscores a critical point. While cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are often criticized for their potential use in illegal activities, the traditional banking system is not without its flaws. In fact, the transparency of blockchain technology makes Bitcoin a poor choice for illicit transactions, contrary to popular belief. This discussion brings us to an essential realization. Cryptocurrencies are not just financial instruments. They represent a movement towards greater transparency, accountability, and fairness in the global financial system. The criticisms from entities like HSBC and certain political figures, who themselves are entangled with the traditional banking sector, often stem from a misunderstanding of what Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies aim to achieve. As we conclude today's journey with Max Kaiser, it's clear that the conversation about cryptocurrencies is about more than just money. It's about challenging existing power structures, advocating for financial inclusivity, and reimagining what a fair and equitable global economy could look like. Thank you for joining us on Unscripted Crypto. If you found value in today's discussion, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.